Oh yeah, baby. New smoker. Coming in hot. Probably like about a month ago I teased new smoker was coming and well, it finally came. And if you saw from the intro, I did go with mill scale. I mean, there's a few top tier smokers out there. You got your mill scales, the workhorse pits. Uh, there's a couple other ones out there, fat stack, stuff like that. I went with the mill scale. One, those guys just spoke to me. I mean, they're a bunch of bearded tattooed guys. They're just my type of people. They're handmade in Texas home of a lot of really delicious barbecue. Everything I've ever heard about them, they're just excellent, excellent smokers. You pay a pretty penny for them, they're not cheap, but they are that upper echelon, top tier, just badass smokers. If you're serious about barbecue, you're serious about smoking foods, this is one of your go-tos for getting the best of the best. Let's take this baby on its maiden voyage. That is the dude unboxed. They did a cool thing with the crate here. So this is the, the side that was right here and this folds down and you screw it in and it's got a nice little slope on it and then it makes a nice little ramp for you to get this heavy bitch out of here. One thing that we have a problem, we already contacted mill scale about it, had a blowout on this tire. And I mean, man, that shows you how heavy this grill is. For it to do that with a solid rubber tire with a metal on the inside there, it broke. I mean, I'm sure the shipping company probably dropped that bitch and that's why it broke like that, but it just bolts on. So I'm sure mill scale will send me a new one and it'll be good, but I gotta try to get this heavy bitch off here. See how it goes. Try to get this thing off with a broken tire. So this might be the last time you see me on camera. I'm gonna get a 700 pound grill drop on this. Luckily my friendly neighbor's here to help. We'll see how it goes. Still alive, I'm still here. But actually, that ramp shit works really good. Okay, well, we got the beast back here. Ramp and stuff coming out of the crate made life way, way easier. And if I didn't have a bum wheel, these casters are big and they're rubber. They actually do a pretty good job at making it easy to maneuver this like 700, I think, plus pound smoker around. So the wheels are key and there's really nice locking casters on them. So once you got it in place, you lock them, make sure that thing's not going anywhere because, well, it is heavy. I am super impressed with the build quality. This thing, I mean, you could get a workout. I mean, you don't, you don't need a landmine attachment. You just come out here and open and close your grill. And if you're worried about that old saying about if you're looking, you ain't cooking, well, I'm sure some people probably couldn't even lift that lid. <laughs> and other than the wheel being busted, the thing is in perfect shape. Looks awesome. Next thing we gotta do is gotta get the smokestack, gotta get the goodie box out of the firebox. There's like a thermometer in there, instruction manual, a few other things get the smokestack bolted on, and then we gotta get it seasoned up, get a fire going in it, and get a ripping. Man, it is, I don't know if you can tell from the shining, it is nuclear hot out here. So what's the best thing to do when it's, you know, 100 degrees outside? Start a fire. And this is a perfect time for me to interrupt and say thanks to the sponsor of today's video, Native. Thanks to Native, even when it is 100 degrees plus outside with humidity so thick, it feels like you're walking through soup. And to add insult to injury, I'm leaning over a hot smoker and fire. My pits are fresh as a daisy. 
I've spoken about Native on the channel before, but if you're new around here, Native is my favorite brand of deodorant. It is made of simple ingredients like coconut oil and shea butter. It's also free of like parabens, aluminum, and is vegan and cruelty free. One of the things I liked most about Native when I first tried it, and I know you're gonna say is that the smell, it was actually the texture. This stuff is nice and smooth and it goes on nice. Some of the other deodorants I've tried in the past, it's like kind of sticky and like rips out your pit hairs, which is just, it's, it's no bueno. Also, this stuff has some staying power. It offers up to 72 hours of fighting that funk. Even in a long, hot day out leaning over a fiery smoker, my pits are certified fresh. Some of my favorite scents from these guys, I really like this charcoal, which is fitting because we're talking about grills and stuff today, but it's funny, it doesn't smell anything like charcoal. It's actually kind of a, I don't know, a fresh masculine leaning. I'd say this one leans a little masculine. I really like it, it's one of my favorites. And then there's a new one they had sent me recently called uh, Ginger Mule, which again, smells nothing like a mule, I know. You guys are like, it's the drink, Jeremy, not the animal. No mules are hurt or endangered during the making of Ginger Mule deodorant. <laughs> They also partner up with 1% for the planet and commit 1% of plastic-free deodorant sales to environmental nonprofits, which I think is something everyone can appreciate. So if Fresh Pits is something you're interested in, check out the good folks at Native. Three of these sticks would normally cost you about 39 bucks, but if you click the link down below and then enter code SIRES2, you can get three of these for 26 bucks, which is like 33, 34% off. You can also get 20% off body washes and toothpaste. So your boy here is looking out, trying to keep you guys fresh during this summer heat. And as always, big thanks to the folks at Native for sponsoring this video and supporting the channel. Back to your regularly scheduled programming. If I remember correctly, I think we were just about to season up this new smoker. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to spray down the whole inside of this guy with some cooking oil. I'm actually gonna do the outside with a linseed oil because that seems to be a little more durable than just lard and whatnot, but you can't use linseed oil on the inside because linseed oil is not food safe. But before we get it cooking, I'm gonna spray all the interior down with some cooking oil. Now I've seen people use, like I said, tallow and just wipe it down with a sponge. I've seen a lot of different methods. Personally, I've seasoned several smokers. I find it easier just to get some like canola oil or some kind of spray oil. Just easy, because you could just spray the whole inside down, spray the grates, spray everything on the inside down, and it's easier than wiping everything down and a little less messy. It's the next day. We got the, uh, the whole inside of the grill nice and coated with some uh, cooking spray. The outside I did with the linseed oil like we talked about. Got the initial burn, let that thing run for two or three hours yesterday and cool completely down overnight. Now we're on day two and I'm gonna do a second burn on it just to get a nice bit of seasoning in there. Make sure we get any of that weird taste, any of the machine oils and stuff burned off and all that good stuff for manufacturing. That's what we're doing right now. I don't know if you can see it. A little smokestack right over there. You probably can't see it very well. She's burning right now. I got a fire going. And again, it's hotter than the pits of hell today. It's over 100 degrees with a heat index. That's why in Florida, I think our grilling season is more like late February through like the end of May and then it picks up again in like October through December. A more apt grilling season for Florida because this time of year it is <laughs> hot out here. And being this hot and over a fire, sometimes not the most comfortable thing in the world. If you want good barbecue, that's what you got to deal with. While we're waiting on this thing to burn out one last time, I thought we'd go over a few details. Mill Scale is the company. This is their 94 gallon one that they sell. Comes with one cooking grate, uh, fits up to three to four briskets, they're saying. One tell true thermometer, one grease drain, one grease bucket, and a lower shelf on the skids at the bottom for storage or wood or whatever you want to put down there. Optional add-ons for this guy, you can add on a high tip paint if you don't want the raw finish. I personally don't like the paint option. I like the raw finish. I think it looks better. It's going to patina over time and look really cool. And I mean, you know me and patina. You can also add an upper cooking grate, which I have on this one. That upper cooking grate is going to, it's pretty thin and it gets like nuclear hot. It's at the hottest part of the smoker. So for me, it's only going to be like if I'm doing chicken wings or something like that, that I want to get crisped up. That's probably where those are going to go. I don't know that I would put anything else up there or not, but 
nevertheless it is an option you can also add on a firebox planchet with lid that is where uh, it has like a little door over your firebox it opens up and it gives you a flat surface you can do is like a little bit of a griddle or a cooking area the shipping is not included in these you do have to pay extra for shipping and it's not the cheapest thing that is a big heavy grill so it has to move by freight if you guys have ever ordered anything that comes by freight, you know how that goes. It depends, the freight goes up and down. Unfortunately, when I got it right now, gas prices are high. So I think from Texas, where this guy's made to me in Florida, uh, I'm in Northern Florida in San Augustine, it was, I wonder where I say around $1,500 just to ship this thing. <laughs> but man, it's heavy. And the guy had a hard time getting it off his truck. So the cooking chamber itself is 24 inch diameter pipe that is a quarter inch thick. The whole grill, everything is made a quarter inch thick steel. The firebox is 20 inch diameter pipe. The smokestack is four foot and it has four eight inch solid rubber casters. The approximate weight is 775 pounds. Overall length is 88 inches. Overall width is 28 inches height 88 inches and that's from the ground to the top of the smokestack height without the smokestack is around 48 inches so without the upper cooking grate you're running about forty seven hundred dollars for this grill and with the upper cooking grate you're coming in at about fifty two hundred and like i said that is without the freight so then by the time depending on where you are that's going to vary greatly but you know you're looking at forty five hundred to six or seven grand <sighs> boy that escalated quickly depending on how far you're shipping it, what additions, what add-ons you get. So this is not a cheap grill, but I will say this, it's handmade in the USA. It's all quarter inch thick steel. This thing will be around long after I am long gone. Something my kids will be cooking on if you care for it properly and keep it oiled or covered to where it doesn't rust through. And even if you didn't, quarter inch steel is gonna take a hell of a long time to rust through. I mean, it would be a shame to let that happen, but. Regardless, this thing is an absolute f***ing tank. It is gonna be around for a long time. So it's, you know, that old saying, buy once, cry once. The stock that they built the legs with is like big beefy square stock. It's got a nice little plate on the side that says that's kind of raised out, custom cut plate that says mill scale grills. It's the fit and finish and the little touches that make this grill very, very special. It's what you would expect out of the kind of thing when you're spending that kind of money on a smoker. That being said though, I'm not missing the fact that you're talking about spending between four and six G's on a smoker and that is not something that everybody's gonna wanna do. That's outside of the realm of what most people are like, I'm not spending damn $6,000 on a grill and that's fine. Everybody has their own budget, everybody has their own level that they, I am a barbecue nut, like I've mentioned in videos before, we grill outdoors like 12 months a year here. So for me, it makes sense to make that kind of investment because it's something we use a lot. And I want something that's gonna last a lifetime and make it the most pleasurable experience. I can't say for sure yet, but from what I can tell so far, maintaining temperature and maintaining a fire in this seems way easier than my old country Brazos. Also, my old country Brazos had a tendency, because it had a baffle, for the smoke to go down and kind of come up under. And a lot of times your food would get kind of like overcooked on the bottom. This. The baffle's different, so it comes in and goes up and it goes over the top of your food. And I'm sure you've heard other people that have had these grills talk about it. It then gets a nice brown on top of your food, which is what you want. You want that convective heat kind of flowing over the top of your food, not coming under and just blasting the bottom of your food and burning it from the bottom. It's also got that smoke collector on the end, which I've heard people say smoke collectors, do they really work? Do they really change anything? Are they bullshit? I don't know, as I cook more and more on this, I'll see, but it makes sense that that allows you to have a bigger area for the smoke to kind of funnel together and get out the tube, which kind of would minimize that hot spot over by, not only help with the airflow, but minimize that hot spot you sometimes get right over by your chimney from where you have kind of a little back pressure and the heat builds up right there. So we'll see. I can't say much because this isn't like a full review because I haven't had enough time to spend with it. This is more of an unboxing first look kind of video. But unboxing first look, I'm hella impressed. If a smoker can be sexy, that's a sexy bitch. I'm gonna let this thing cool down. I got some beef back ribs in the house thawing out. We're gonna get those things seasoned up after this thing fully cools down, start a fresh fire in it, fire off these beef back ribs.
first inaugural cook on the meal scale. Now, like I said, this was not a cook video, so we didn't go into great detail on what we did with these ribs. And honestly, I think this is, I'm gonna say this is the first time I've done beef back ribs. Ooh, I saw a fly. If you guys don't have one of these things, the bug assault, man, for flies, you can't beat it. I always keep it around when I'm grilling because the flies get out of control. I'm sure that's not just a Florida problem. Mill scale ran great. Much easier to maintain the temperature on than my old smoker was. It was like, a, it was a real pleasure to use, which I mean, rightly so with that price tag. I will give you my full opinion and maybe a full review on the grill at a later date once I've had, you know, like a couple months to cook on it. And don't worry, there's gonna be plenty of cooks to come. Pretty soon, now that I have this thing on board, we're gonna do a Traeger verse offset. I wanted to have like a top of the line offset because the Traeger is a top of the line Traeger. They're a similar price point, both kind of flagship kind of grill. So I wanted to have this before I did it. But now that we have it, we're going to do a rib cook off. Some on the Traeger, some on the mill scale. I'm going to invite some friends over and we're going to do some blind taste tests to see if offset first pellet, which I think should be fun. The ribs turned out fantastic. They look delicious just to I am going to, ooh, look at that guy. Let me look over here in this camera here. Can you see the juice? I don't know if you can see the juice. Oh man, this thing looks fantastic. Second problem is I just had my wisdom teeth out. My mouth isn't fully recuperated. So rather than taking a big old bite, I'm gonna rip a little bit of this off and try to eat it this way <laughs> because I still got some soreness going on in the back there. Oh man. Like I said, I haven't cooked a lot of beef back ribs, so I don't know if I can contribute this to the mill scale or the mill scale mixed with the ribs or what, but my God, that's delicious. I've done dino ribs before, like plate ribs. I think these are better than those. I know that might be blasphemous to some of you guys. Hopefully that camera over there is picking this up and it's in focus. I mean, that is just some juicy, smokering, beefy, goodness. I was real happy with the way that new smoker performed. If you're looking for a super high-end custom smoker, definitely give the guys at Mill Scale a look. My um, oldest also had his wisdom teeth out the same time I did. He had all four of his out and he hasn't had any meat because of the same problem I'm having. So he was really looking forward <laughs> to these beef ribs. So I'm going to go inside, away from these damn flies. We'll close this thing out in a few. And you may want to hang out. I mean, if you want to click off now, you can, but you know at the end of my videos, we announce winners to giveaways. We do giveaways, all kinds of stuff. So you may want to hang in. I'm just saying, I'm going to go eat some ribs. All right, long day out in the heat cooking. Now I got a full belly and the meat sweats. Got my cigar, I'm rehydrating. Let's close this bitch out. First, we got to draw the winner from last week's, which was for a flask. All right, drum roll, Bartman 1360. That brings me back, Bartman. I wonder if that's like Bart, Bart Simpson, or if maybe his name's just Bart, and he's calling himself the man. I don't know, but congratulations, Bartman. Bartman says, garage is looking sweet. Hashtag Skull Bliss, hashtag Devil's Taint, which were the hashtags from last week. So Bartman, thank you my brother for commenting, being a subscriber, all that good stuff. You win a nice new flask, which I don't have one. Yes I do, right here. Here's one of the new ones. Gonna get one of these guys. I will comment down below asking you to send us your email information, but, and we gotta talk about this every video, Bartman will be the only one getting a comment on last week's video. Anybody else who gets a comment from some random account saying they won, it's a scam. These scammers have been around. I think we're starting to get rid of them, but they still pop in there. I think last video they popped in there. If I didn't say your name live on a video, it's a scam. Bartman, congratulations, brother. Now let's see, for this week's giveaway, what will we give away? Huh, I know what we'll do. This week we will give away 
one of my new Zippos coming out. And nobody's actually even seen these yet because these have not been released. So you will be one of the first people to get one of the new designs on the new Zippo. And I'm not showing it up close on purpose. And it's just a all brass Zippo and it will come with the standard Zippo and a butane torch uh, site insert. It's because it's a cigar Zippo. Rules are as always. You gotta be a subscriber to the channel. You gotta like the video and down below, let's comment, let's do hashtag meat sweats because your boy was sweating out there a lot today and I got the meat sweats from all those ribs. Hashtag Gucci grills <laughs> because that new middle scale, that thing's Gucci. It's an expensive bitch, but man, it runs like a dream. Hashtag meat sweats, hashtag Gucci grills, <laughs> which I guess could be confused for. Anyway, that's what we're going with. <laughs> like the video, be a subscriber, and we will draw the winner live in next week's video. All right, guys, well, that does wrap this one up. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this, found it entertaining, and maybe got a little bit of information out of it. If you did, feel free to smash that like button. That always helps us out. If you're not a subscriber, please consider doing so. We'd love to have you on board. I hope everyone is having a fantastic week, and we'll see you in the next video. I know there's gonna be some of you in the comments that are gonna talk about how expensive this damn smoker is. Anytime I post anything that's expensive, I get some people that get real butthurt about expensive shit. Thinking about starting to do some pew pew content on my second channel. I don't wanna say the other word if you know what I'm talking about though, if you're into those things. Definitely not doing it on this channel because of YouTube's like, so the second channel where I do scar content, that's an unmonetized channel. Let me know. Gauge the interest.